welcome you all to the prefabricated structures uh, so in this lecture we are going to discuss about the few things which have been left in the second unit so let's we move on to that so first we are going to discuss about the large panel structure so in our previous lectures we have discussed about the large panel system uh, but in that lectures we have uh, discussed in a very uh, short manner but in this in this part we are going to deal it and we are going to elaborate it so first we need to know in what are the structures in what are the components the large panel structures are been done so first exterior and interior walls and then floor slabs roofs and staircase so these are the components which are made it with the large panel system so that is said to be an uh main parts of the building so this is the first point which is given in this slide and then when you move on move on to the second one so there is mainly proposed with the two design scheme so one is frame panel and another one is frameless so first we are going to deal with the frame panel system so we have uh, discussed these things in our previous lectures also but in this we need to recall it again okay because we are making an in depth of uh, the concepts so in frame panel buildings all the base loads are borne by the building's frame and the panels are usually used to fill the frame and as enclosure elements while in frameless building it is assembled from panels that perform the load bearing and enclosing functions simultaneously so you know what is mean by frame and uh, you know what is mean by frameless so frame consists of two column and a beam but uh, in frameless it is not uh, with the type of uh, with the type of components so this is the major difference so here it has been discussed so what are the key points uh, like the base loads are uh, borne by the buildings frame only here it is assembled from the panels that perform the load bearing and enclosing function which done simultaneously right so we are going to discuss the, uh, based upon the separate components so first we are going to deal it with exterior panel so exterior sorry not a panel uh, we here we need to mention it as a wall so exterior wall which is uh, which is uh, also in large panel structure which is made up of with the large panel structure it consists of one or two stories in height and one or two rooms in width also uh, for example i can say you that um, you are uh, ordering to the manufacturer that you need a panel which need to cover the first floor and the second floor so they will go up with the two story site for constructing it for prefabricating it right same way you can go for the one story or you can go for the two story it depends upon your uh, your building so this is mentioned in the first point and then it can be the panels can be with openings or without openings or with the door openings also so that is mentioned in the second point and third one in terms of design so while you go for uh, design terms then wall panels are either in single layer or multi layer so single layer or it can be a sandwiched one so there some of the insulating materials will be present at the mid middle portion so that is being mentioned there and it is it is it can be manufactured with the insulating properties like a uh, um uh example lightweight concrete cellular concrete and hollow ceramic stone so these are uh, some of the insulating properties which can be used in the, used in the solid panels and it can be manufactured and it can be delivered to the site so this is mentioned in the fourth point and the fifth one it can be made with the two or three layers also the sandwich panel can be made with the two or three rails uh, three layers also Uh, in our previous lectures also we have discussed about the sandwich wall panel in that also we have discussed this part so the insulating properties mainly uh, done for uh, acoustic or uh, uh, climatic conditions so whatever whatever the things which is happening at the site you need to take a remedy so you can choose upon based upon your problems so the remedy will be an insulating properties okay so by that the exterior wall can be made so this is uh, mentioned in the last point and then we are going to discuss with the interior walls so interior walls can be made up of with 
non load bearing and also it can be a load bearing wall and these are generally made up with gypsum slag concrete and also with the other materials and third one the same thing which we have discussed in our uh, exterior wall so the same thing which has been repeated here repeated here that it can be made with the heavy or lightweight concrete silicate concrete or cellular concrete and then the fourth point the dimensions so the critical thing is dimension so dimensions of the room is equal to the height of the room uh, and uh, with the width of the room is also depends upon the uh, width or depth of the room so the dimensions which is a key thing which it should be given by the site um, site uh, th those who are going uh, doing the site things right so they need to be clear with the site dimension so that they can tell the manufacturer to plan according to that and then the thickness usually for a one room will be on a 10 to 14 cm the panel thickness will be uh, this much right and then we are moving on to the next component that is floor slab so floor slab is generally made up with the rc thing so reinforced concrete and the area of one floor slab in apartment building it is equally to the area of one room that is equal to 30 square meter also so that is mentioned in the second point and the large panel floor slabs it is done for the housing public administrative buildings and it is made with a sandwich type or a solid type so it depends upon the client so the manufacturer can made up made with and it can be delivered so that is mentioned in the third point so these are the things discussed in the floor slab and then we are moving on to the next topic that is shear wall so shear wall we know that uh, we are going to construct the wall which is going to resist the shear so that is the main objective of shear wall so shear walls are a vertical elements of the horizontal force resisting system right so the wind force is an horizontal force and also a soil force which is uh, done for the basement construction it is also an horizontal force but here in this shear wall we are going to discuss with the things of horizontal force res oh, sorry force resisting system and also some of the lateral loads okay so it is constructed to counter the effect of lateral load which is acting upon the structure so that is mentioned in the second point so normally in residential construction it is uh, built with the straight at external walls and uh, it looks like a box like structure which gives a lateral support to the building uh, which can resist for the wind loads so that is the main uh, thing for that only we are going for shear wall right and then importance so what are the importance been listed out here the first one is strength and stiffness so to resist the horizontal force so that is the main thing you need to develop the strength and stiffness factor so it should be concerned in the design part of shear wall and it also need to be properly constructed so that th uh, this is the first thing which is mentioned in this slide and then lateral forces right lateral forces which is caused by the wind and earthquake and also uneven settlement of loads so these are the things are said to be in lateral loads so for these loads only you are going to design the shear wall to resist these lateral loads right and then in the second point in building construction a rigid vertical diagram capable of transferring lateral force from exterior walls floors and roofs to the ground foundation in a direction parallel to their planes so it is uh, dealt with the uh, force uh, load distributions right and then in the fourth point they are mentioned about the torsional forces when the wind is acting on the wall uh, at the uh, you can say uh, at the corner of the building it creates some twisting force so to avoid those things you need shear wall right and then these twi twisting force make the building to get teared so this thing should be avoided so we need to be more cautious uh, caution at the joint 
okay beam column joint and uh, any other components joint areas so the joint places or carries maximum shear load shear load and uh, also other loads which is been transferred to the columns so the joint place is very important in the design part so you need to be properly uh, designed and in it should re resist the lateral forces also and then in last two decades shear wall becomes an important part in the mid rise mid high rise residential building you can see uh, in normal residential flats the shear wall is mean uh, mainly built for uh, resisting the vibrations which are coming from the lift so this is uh, this is thing this is an important thing which is been done nowadays in uh, every site conditions right and uh, by this by providing the shear wall it should resist the lateral displacements so it is reducing the lateral displace displacements which is occurred due to the wind or earthquake so any other things it should re reduce the lateral displacements and we are uh, seeing here about the position of shear wall so it is an exterior position and interior position so you can see that and then purpose of constructing shear wall so what are the main purpose uh, so for uh, uh, you are going for shear wall so that is been discussed here you can see that uh, in the right hand side i have uh, noted out so at corner we are uh, facing the wind uh, wind forces so at uh, the corner nodes are been uh, subjected to high twisting forces and uh, it it is going to face all the lateral loads right so to avoid that uh, we are going with the shear wall so shear wall will also hold the position in the right way so by that you can resist the wind force so that is the main part so shear walls are not only designed for uh, resisting the uh, gravity or vertical loads and uh, it is mainly and uh, design uh, sorry it is mainly designed for lateral loads which is uh, mean for earthquake and wind and the walls are structurally integrated uh, no doubt uh, that it is structurally integrated with the roof and floors so it acts as a integrated system right and then shear wall structural system are more stable because their supporting area that is cross sectional area of all shear wall right with reference to the total plan area is comparatively more so that shear wall system is resisting more and it is need to resist the uplift force and uh, by that only the building can withstand from the wind forces so these are the main key things so to go for a shear wall construction in the site aspects and then comparison so comparison with shear wall with the normal conventional load bearing walls so load bearing masonry is a very br brittle material uh, it is a brittle one and uh, you can see that um, unreinforced big masonry it is collapsed when uh, we go for earthquake or uh, uneven uh, settlements right so these can be avoided in a uh, shear wall and rcc framed structures are slender one so it is also a ma main point and um, the concept of shear wall uh, is a box like three dimensional structure so it can resist the later loads and uh, it is not it is possible in the rcc frame uh, to resist the earthquake but you need to plan or you need to design according to that uh, factors and you need to develop those skills in the design criteria on the other hand even moderately designed shear wall structures not only more stable but also comparatively quite ductile so you need the member which you are uh, choosing should be in the form of ductile right it should not be in a stiff manner and uh, the shear wall uh, should be well with the safety terms and while you go for earthquake uh, the member is not a ductile one then it collapses and leads to uh, several deaths 
so to avoid those things it should be in a tactile manner and it should withstand for the uh, earthquakes and uh, it should provide a safety thing to the peoples and it should indicate enough warnings so it can be indicated in the rcc structures uh, with uh, like uh, cracks uh, so by that you can uh, uh, know uh, the structure is getting uh, older so by that you can go for the rehabilitation and techniques also for structural purpose we consider the exterior walls as the shear resisting walls so this is the main point so for structural purpose we are considering the exterior walls as a shear resisting walls because it is going to interact with the outer environment so it should be a shear resistant wall right and forces from the ceiling and roof diagrams make their way to outside along assumed paths enter the walls and exit at the foundation so it is a load distribution which has been uh, given here and then forces on the shear wall previously we have discussed about these two forces shear force and uplift force but here we are uh, once again we are going to discuss it and uh, we are going to know about the key points so shear force uh, normally shear wall is going to resist the two thing mainly in the building one is shear and another one is uplift so these two forces occur when the uh, building is subjected to the wind pressure so shear pressure uh, sorry shear force which act at the nodes and uplift force which will be acted at the bottom of the building and the bottom of, uh, bottom columns uh, which is been uh, raised at the ground stories so you need to avoid these two things then only you can make the building in a um, stable manner right the first one is shear force so it should withstand for the wind and waves and uh, the height of the wall so you need to be cautious and uh, you need to prepare uh, about that so first thing is shear force and uplift force horizontal force top of the building so when the horizontal force is acting at the top of the building it pushes the top of building to the down position so at bottom the columns are subjected to move upward so to avoid that you need to place some shear wall which is connecting with the column and the beam so it acts as a single integrated system by that you can resist the later loads so th that is the main thing so these two forces are the main task for shear wall design and then last one so this is classification of shear wall and the types which is based on the material so classification is nothing uh, simple rectangular types and flanged walls and uh, coupled shear walls rigid frame shear walls framed walls with infilled frames and uh, the shear walls which is uh, supported with the column and core type shear walls so these are classifications of uh, shear wall and based upon the material we are going to discuss the, the types here so the first one is rc which is made with the reinforced concrete and uh, plywood uh, so shear wall which is made with the material of plywood and mid ply and uh, hollow concrete block masonry and steel plate shear walls also so these are uh, the common things which are used in the uh, shear wall construction so these are the materials right so the classifications based on materials and uh, general classifications been listed over here by this we were um, second unit second unit is getting over in our next lecture we can uh, discuss about the third unit topics thank you